Tech TDS 700D. This is like the apex of the 700 series or really the 500 series TDSs. Um, this one is the first one to be called by name, DPO. Earlier versions were InstaView. This is a pretty decent scope. It's got a really nice display. This is by far the best that Tech came out with, I think. Um, I haven't seen anything more than like a TDS7104, but I really like the display on these. It's pretty sweet. Um, call the factory. So let's look at a couple of things here real fast. Shift status. You look at the banner, it tells us what it is, very similar to the power on screen. Uh, under the utility, this is the error log actually. Let's go at the top. Calibration, You'll, on this screen you'd want to see that everything shows pass down below, not initialized or fail, definitely not fail, especially at the single pa signal path um, item or the SPC. Um, and you can see that the error log on this scope is clear, so there aren't any issues. Um, entries will be added to this in here anytime the scope has an error. Some errors aren't that big of a deal, but um, you know, especially errors that have to do with the probes or the um, or disk storage th things like that. Those aren't really too important. I mean, you can easily clean your floppy drive. If your floppy drive ain't working, get a disk cleaning kit and it'll almost always bring it back to life. The hard drive, sometimes if the hard drive fails, you'll want to take the hard drive out of it and just simply put it into your laptop and have it do its regular disk uh, maintenance things that you would do in any other hard drive and then the thing will very often come back to life. Okay, let's look at a couple of things here. Their menu, we can auto set if we want give us a square wave, but for the first thing I'm going to do is give you four channels, do auto set on them. Everything came up to 50 millivolts, that's pretty standard. You don't want, it's best if you don't get like one saying 200 millivolts and yeah, there's 50 when there's no signal on it. It's nice to know that everything comes up exactly the same. Um, Although a lot of times you will have to hit auto set twice on a given scope to get it to um, come up the same. It's no big deal. You also, after signal compensation, you want to see all of the lines pretty much line up at the lowest setting, amplitude setting, with the marker on the left. That just tells you that it is indeed compensating well and everything's on nice alignment. Um, now the big selling point about this scope is the DPO feature and if I press the DPO you'll see that the display turns into much more fast acquisition. It acquires signals much more faster, it's not lost in memory, um, you're not seeing just like one or two percent of the signal, you're seeing much more of the signal is being represented. Um, and I'll show you in a moment that that's pretty handy. This scope being a D is really fast in the transitions. You know, there's normal scope like any other scope would be right here, and this is DPO. If this was a, like a, for example, 700C scope, it would take probably three, four times longer for it to transition from regular scope to DPO. If this was an A scope, you would think that there was something wrong with the A scope comparing it to this scope because it takes so long to go between modes that you're wondering what's going on if your point of reference is a 700 series D model. So just a little tidbit there. Now we go to the factory recall. Send that back. And now I have a um, 6139A 500 megahertz bandwidth scope or probe rather right here. And auto set should give me a square wave and I have a pretty handy little glitch generator and I'm able to try out the InstaView feature with this. I look at frequency we see it's not a terribly fast signal 179 kilohertz. Not terribly fast. I go to display and I tell it I want infinite persistence. Now this is the type of display you'd get on anything else. You can see that um, there's not a lot going on with this signal. If you were to look at this signal um, with this setup, typically you might take two, th 
two to five minutes, sometimes as fast as 30 seconds, you'll see a glitch come on screen. Not a big deal. In other words, if you were working on a project, you might think that this square wave is in pretty decent shape and you can move on to another signal. But if you hit DPO, you're going to see suddenly lots of glitches popping onto the screen. And these are probably, they look like to me like they're coming on the camera pretty well. But if I go to infinite persistence, then you can see that um, a lot is going on with this square wave. This is not a very clean square wave. And this is the big selling point about this scope. Many other brands of scopes can give you this type of performance right here. This is the standard scope view again. But when you go to DPO where you're extremely fast acquisition speeds and you're not missing anything or you're not missing relatively anything, they claim that this is up to like having a 20 what was it, 2467B, perhaps the best analog scope ever, 400 megahertz of bandwidth. And it had, um, that was a bright eye scope and the digital, the phosphor on the screen would hold an image really well. And they, this is like the more modern equivalent as far as analog scopes go. Yet I don't think it gets any better than the 2467B. But anyhow, there's your DPO working regular signal looks great you're thinking everything's fine but you're wondering why your system's crashing if you go to the DPO I can stop it, it says stop in the upper corner reset it and you can see right away it's starting to see problems and this is no lie if I have a clean square wave running or sine wave etc I can run DPO and um, I will not see glitches like if it's coming off of a decent quality signal generator um, but this really illustrates um, how that works and how well it works and why this was such a huge chilling point for tech and why they still have DPO and, and newer scopes. This scope isn't as big as a 700 or 7104 for example TDS. The display is not touch screen but I really like the display on this better. Um, the 7104s are a bigger box, um, but they can also do things that this can't do either. The technology still moves on, and in current applications, you know, the technology is moving on really fast. This thing will do two giga samples per second on one channel, one giga sample per second on two, and 500 mega samples on. I believe it's 500 on four. It might be one gig of sample on, on all four. I'm not sure. Just depends on how they're working the interleave with this. Um, pretty sweet scope. Um, not a lot of complaints or, from me anyway. A little bit louder than I prefer, but as I get older, I seem to be a little more picky about noises. Um, anyhow, that's my desk, my um, presentation on the DPO. I hope someone found this useful. Um, pretty neat, pretty neat setup, dots, um, have a great day, bye now.